Hi everyone, my name is Sasha and I'm one of the mentors for today's program. Um, so I'll be taking over the part of introduction to programming before Kush goes into some more interesting things about uh, programming and so on. So for this section, um, we will be talking about base, uh, basic Python, right? So things like why are we actually learning Python? Why is Python, Python so important in today's world and so on? So actually Python was is, uh, mostly used for web development, things like software development and uh, you know, doing simple mathematics and accessing databases. So it's very good for these kind of things. And you know, the, the websites you're seeing every day is actually a lot of the, the logical process behind it is done by Python, which is you know, a programming language. So uh, you know, when you want to access databases, if you want to sort of modify, fi modify files, edit files, your simple uh, Excel files and so on. Python is, Python is actually a great tool for these. And one of the reasons I like Python is because the, readab the readability of Python is really good because like it's simple English, right? So anyone, even a simple, um, like anyone who understands English can more or less know what's happening um, when they are reading through your Python script and so on. So let's watch a nice YouTube video on what exactly uh, what Python is and some interesting facts. Uh, let me stop sharing my screen. Uh, okay, let's watch the video here. Okay. In this video, I'm going to answer top three questions my students ask me about Python. What is Python? What you can do with it? And why is it so popular? In other words, what does it do that other programming languages don't? Python is the world's fastest growing and most popular programming language, not just amongst software engineers, but also amongst mathematicians, data analysts, scientists, accountants, network engineers, and even kids, because it's a very beginner-friendly programming language. So people from different disciplines use Python for a variety of different tasks, such as data analysis and visualization, artificial intelligence and machine learning, automation. In fact, that's one of the big uses of Python amongst people who are not software developers. If you constantly have to do boring, repetitive tasks, such as copying files and folders around, renaming them, uploading them to a server, you can easily write a Python script to automate all that and save your time. And that's just one example. If you continuously have to work with Excel spreadsheets, PDFs, CSV files, download websites and parse them, you can automate all that stuff with Python. So you don't have to be a software developer to use Python. You could be an accountant, a mathematician, or a scientist, and use Python to make your life easier. You can also use Python to build web, mobile, and desktop applications, as well as software testing or even hacking. So Python is a multi-purpose language. Now, if you have some programming experience, you may say, but Mosh, we can do all this stuff with other programming languages. So what's the big deal about Python? Here are a few reasons. With Python, you can solve complex problems in less time with fewer lines of code. Here's an example. Let's say we want to extract the first three letters of the text, hello world. This is the code we have to write in C-sharp. This is how we do it in JavaScript. And here's how we do it in Python. See how short and plain the language is? And that's just the beginning. Python makes a lot of trivial things really easy with a simple yet powerful syntax. Here are a few other reasons why Python is so popular. It's a high level language, so you don't have to worry about complex tasks, such as memory management, like you do in C++. It's cross-platform, which means you can build and run Python applications on Windows, Mac, and Linux. It has a huge community, so whenever you get stuck, there's someone out there to help. It has a large ecosystem of libraries, frameworks, and tools, which means whatever you want to do, it is likely that someone else has done it before, because Python has been around for over 20 years. So in a nutshell, Python is a multi-purpose language with a simple, clean, and beginner-friendly syntax. All of that means Python is awesome. Technically, everything you do with Python you can do with other programming languages, but Python's simplicity and elegance has made it grow way more than other programming languages. That's why it's the number one language employers are looking for. So whether you're a programmer or an absolute beginner, learning Python opens up lots of job opportunities to you. In fact, the average Python developer earns a whopping $116,000 a year. If you found this video helpful, please support my hard work by liking it and sharing it with others. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel because I have... Okay, so um, that video was a great introduction to Python and uh, I think the job, job opportunities is quite convincing and uh, attractive, definitely. Uh, so I think one aspect he said was that, you know, Python is... Um, a very beginner friendly language and that's why we are starting off with python and even though it's beginner friendly you know, a lot of difficult complex tasks can be solved solved quite simply with python and i think the syntax and the indentations and stuff which we will talk about later or in upcoming lessons is also what makes it so easy to read and understand right because um in languages like c plus and so on the lines will be written on the same line but for Python, you actually have to 
uh, indent and move on to the next line and so on. So now let's go on to some basic um, Python knowledge, which is very important to code some simple websites and so on. So moving on. So let's talk about variables, right? So variables are firstly how you identify a certain element. So let's say I assign a variable to something. So let's say I have the number 10. So as you can see, my first variable is sum of scores. So I want to give uh, the number 10. So the sum of scores can be 10. So all, all I have to write is sum of scores equals 10. So I'm assigning um, the variable sum of scores to 10. So in my upcoming uh, lines of code, I can simply refer to 10 as sum of scores. So over here is some uh, simple syntax which you have to keep in mind when you write Python and um, but luckily, actually, when you are actually doing code and code, when I'm doing coding, these kind of errors will be sort of uh, popped up so that you don't have to worry too much. You don't have to mem exactly uh, memorize all these. You know, um, when the error pops up as you're, as you're coding, uh, you can easily rectify it. And I think one worry some of you might have is that um, are you going to code in this program? And we definitely have to because practice is important when you're coding. But since some of us might not actually have access to like Python to download Python and so on, we we will we are actually planning to share some Google Colab notebooks. So what Google Colab does is that you can um, access this link and code on it. Um, it's like a simple Google Google folder, Google Drive folder, so it's accessible to everyone and it's easier to use. So here are just some like reminders. So it's case sensitive. So capital B, a, a small, small B, and all these are different variables, right? So, um, and also um, do not use spaces, punctuation, and so on. Just keep it simple. Uh, and also don't use Python keywords, which we'll go on to in the next uh, slide. And how do we comment so on Python? So what are comments exactly? Comments are basically to improve your readability. So let's say I, I add this code, sum of scores equals 10 then you want to tell the person reading your code that I have assigned this uh, value to some of scores because so on. So it's just like typing normal English, just that it's after a, a dash. Okay, sorry, a hyphen. Okay, now, um, as you can see, there's a hashtag sign at the top. Now moving on, these are some uh, variables um, which have already been pre-assigned by Python. Uh, in the language, so things like false, none, true, and these have already been given a value. These are already known variables, so you don't have to, you can't actually assign them like and equals 10 is something we won't do because and is already something defined and it's literally and. I say this and this, right? So just co uh, co combining both these things. So we usually don't include both these. Uh, we usually don't assign these variables which are already included in Python as variables. Moving on, these are some data types, um, which is basically how, what we refer to some of the things in Python. So you can see one, two, three, four are integers, or just int in Python, very simple. And when you add a dot, as we know in math, we call it a float. So in the same thing in Python, is called a float. And string, so this might be a bit new, but also very simple. String is basically when you have normal basic text, right? So how you identify strings is when there's a quotation mark, can be single or double uh, around the, the string. So let's say ABC123 quotation mark on each side, that means it is a string. And finally, a bool. It's quite interesting what a bool is. So um, bool is basically this value of true or false. So let's say um, 2017 is greater than 2018. I type that in. And since 2017 is less than 2018, I'll get false. Right, because my statement there is not true, so it's false. So uh, there's some interesting facts on the left here, that, which says that the most positive version is uh, 1.79 times 10 to the power of 308. So after that, you will just have to use infinity or negative infinity. Moving on, we have some mathematical operators, some simple ones, same as the ones we use in uh, you know, everyday mathematics, plus, minus, multiplication, division. These are the signs we use. So on the right hand side here, you can see some simple examples. Um, over here, um, over here. So you know, 
but these are a bit large numbers. So we can use simple things like five plus six, you get 11 uh, and so on. So, you know, and as you can see here, it's a point zero, right? So these numbers actually float. They're not integers because it's a point, okay? So very simple stuff. And um, floor division uh, might be a bit new to some of you. So it basically returns the value on the left divided by the right, rounded down to the nearest integer. So it does not give you the remainder, but it's just rounded down to the nearest integer, right? And the, the note here also states that it may not necessarily be an int, as you can see, since there's a dot, a floating point, as they call it, it's a float. And uh, when you say something to the power of something, so two to the power of five, I just give uh, two star signs, which means it's exponentially uh, multiplied to the number, right? So then we have modulus, which is just what is the remainder of what you get, right? So uh, floor division gives you the value, while modulus gives you the remainder, right? These are all mathematical things we learned in um, basic mathematics. Now, when we want to compare two, uh, two items, right? So over here, bool is where it comes in here, yeah, it comes into play. So we say 2017 equals equals. So it's comparing these two uh, values, right? 2017 equals equals 2017. Obviously, that's true. It's the same thing. But 2017 that equals equals 2018 is false, right? So this statement there, where it's saying 2017 equals equals 2018, can be basically read as is 2017 the, the same as 2018? It's it equivalent to 2018 and you get false. So false is a bool, it's a bool value or bool is short of a boolean, right? And same thing below, uh, exclamation mark and a, uh, equal sign gives you non-equivalence, non right? So 2017, you can read this as does not equal to 2017 and that's false because it is equivalent and so on. So still very simple. Basic Python stuff, you can try this on your own, some simple math, you can type in any numbers, use Python as your calculator even, right? So these are just some more compar comparing stuff, which makes life a bit more easier, you know, when you want to say, is this greater than this and so on, then you can simply ask 2017, less than 2017, false, right? And so on, you have all these examples here, I'll let you go through it for a while, but just have to take note that uh, less than or equal to or greater than or equal to the arrows, arrow uh, symbol is before the equal sign, right? So it's less than or equal to and below we have greater than or equal to. And then you get a value if it's false or true depending on what you give. Now finally, as we come to the um, more important part of Python, which you will see everywhere, is a function. So a function is basically what you call when you want something to be done. So let's say uh, I want to add five times five, but I don't want to keep saying five times five, five times five. So I, I can put it under a function. So I can name this function. So I can say, oh yeah, yeah, function name. So I can say multiplic multiplication function, right? And you have arguments. So arguments are what you will add into the thing. So Let's say under function, I say um, x times y. So I want this function to return x times y. And later on, maybe I'm calculating my peg, my calculate, calculating something, and I want to I want to know what uh, 5 times 10 is. So all I have to do is call this function. So I'll say multiplication, multiplication and uh, bracket. My x, right, which is defined initially, now becomes 5 and my argument two becomes 10, right? So all I have to do is call that. So multiplication five comma 10 and bracket, and then I'll get the answer 50 because initially when I defined this function, I said X times Y, return X times Y. So you'll see an example here for a, you know, a clearer example uh, on the right. So define uh, um, DEF add numbers. So you, you have to add DEF uh, in front of a function so that the system knows that it's a function. So A and B, and then, so what this function does is it returns A plus B. So later on when I'm calling this function, all I have to do is add underscore numbers, bracket five and 10, and I'll get 15, right? Uh, now I can call this function again somewhere else. I can put add numbers seven, and then I'll seven, seven comma, uh, 20, then I'll get 27. 
So it's very simple. It basically returns me what this function needs to do. And initially, since I don't know what numbers I have, I don't know if it's 5, 20, whatever it is, I can just say A or B, right? Because later on, I can just insert whatever value I need. So it's very useful with these kind of functions because I can define any function and later on just call it whenever I need. You know, let's say I'm creating a web application and let's say when, I, when my user clicks on this button, I want the function to be like this. I just add this function there, right? And I can, um, so it's very simple to just call it and makes the code more easier to read. And I'm calling these functions at, and uh, all these places I need it. And, and I don't need to keep writing this whole return A and B, return A and B, A plus B, return A plus B, but I just call the function and that's it, right? So um, these are some common functions we have in built into Python. So print length stands for length. So length of, let's say length of this string. So length of a string gives me how many digit, uh, elf characters there are in that string. So let's say I put len bracket um, uh, quotation marks st uh, string quotation mark and then bracket again. Then I'll get string. So I'll get six as my length of that. Right. So um, there's some built-in functions which are already have been predefined into Python, similar to how there are some variables that are predefined into Python, right? So now next up, Kush will be going through some interesting things about Python. Um, yeah, thank you.